Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for a week commencing the 23rd of September with me, Patrick Munley. Following a week of central bank meetings, focus shifts back to key macroeconomic data, starting in the US with the release of first tier readings. The week starts with August Chicago Fed Activity Index manufacturing conditions are weak and likely to remain so. You also get September market manufacturing PMIs. Investments in employment and manufacturing sector is set to decelerate further. September market services should read that risk from global and manufacturing weakness are starting to take an impact. Tuesday sees September consumer confidence index with expectations materially weaker than current conditions. On Thursday, we will receive Q2 GDP final print, expected to come in line with the 2% expectations and no material revisions likely. Friday, we will receive August durable goods orders, underlying trend weak and at risk of further deterioration. August personal income with wages growth robust, but unlikely to accelerate further. We also get August personal spending with spending expected to slow through the second half. August PCE deflator with core prices expected to rise 0.2% in the month and 1.8% year over year. We wrap up the week with September University of Michigan sentiment with current and expected views having turned down. Also keep an eye on the wires as we have numerous Fed speakers commenting throughout the week. From a technical perspective, the dollar index has frustrated both bulls and bears this week and continues to consolidate within a tight price bracket of the 99 to 98 handle. Now, as previously suggested, I continue to look for um, further downside in the dollar index. I have a target down at the tr uh, ascending trend line support towards 96.50. However, if we do break to the upside in the dollar index and take out the 99 resistance, then I'll be anticipating we test this confluent resistance above at the 99.80, which represents both the yearly R1 and the monthly R1 and our ascending trendline resistance. I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns in this area to set short positions again, targeting that 96.50 support area. A sustained push through the 99.80 and a breach of the 100 psychological level will see a test of the monthly trendline resistance up towards 101. Whilst we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. Gold mapped the price pattern that I identified last week, and we've held that 1480 support zone with a strong close on Friday. Whilst 1480 survives, I am looking for a test of the 1580 resistance, which represents the yearly R3 pivot and the monthly R1. From here, I'll be watching for potential bearish reversal patterns to set short positions, targeting a move back down towards the 1450 area. However, if prices fail to break above the 1535 resistance, there's a potential for a head and shoulders pattern to develop, and that could see an early test of that support down to 1450. In Canada this week, we don't get any tier one data, although market watchers will be eyeing the wires for political developments uh, that are likely to take centre stage as current Prime Minister Trudeau remains under pressure ahead of elections on the 21st of October. From a technical perspective, as the Canadian dollar continues to find resistance at the 133, I have an equidistant swing objective down at 131, where I'd reassess the price action. Data for the Eurozone is pretty limited to the preliminary Monday's September market manufacturing Flash PMIs. Manufacturing is likely to remain weak. We also get September market services flashes. Unlike manufacturing services, have to date remained resilient. We also get speeches from ECB President Draghi, who speaks on Monday and Thursday in testimony to the European Parliament. From a technical perspective, much like the dollar index, the euro has continued to consolidate in a relatively tight range, with resistance at the 111 handle and support down at 110. As 110 continues to support, I see the potential to breach the descending trend line and a move up to test the 111.70 level, where the major descending trend line comes in just above at the 112 level. However, a failure below the 110 support zone would open a likely retest of our current lows down to the 109.30 and likely an extension lower to test the descending trendline support down at 108. 
whilst we're talking about the Eurozone, let's check in with the DAX. The DAX continued to consolidate as we had suggested last week, and I'm looking for a pullback to the support, trendline support at the 12,150 level. From here, I think we should get buyers stepping in to complete the cycle and test up towards that 12,700 resistance level where I would anticipate we see some bearish reversal patterns and an opportunity to set some short positions playing for a three-wave correction. Similar to the Eurozone, data is pretty sparse in the UK. The data bag comprises of key manufacturing readings, the CBI trends, total orders, and Friday's GFK Consumer Confidence Index, which is expected to remain supported by the robust employment situation in the UK. BOE Governor Carney joins the ECB chief, giving a speech on financial services in Frankfurt on Thursday. However, the main focus will be on the UK Supreme Court ruling on the legality of PM Johnson's suspension of the Parliament. A verdict is expected early in the week. Cable tested up towards that 126 target area and sellers duly stepped in. And we saw a key day reversal in Sterling on Friday. Whilst the resistance at 126 remains intact, I see the potential now for a more meaningful correction down to the 123 area, where I'd be looking for bids to develop, and then I'd be interested in setting long positions on daily reversal patterns to target an equidistant swing objective up towards the 128 area. However, a failure below the 122.30 support area would be a bearish development suggesting a move back down to test cycle lows below the 120 handle. In Asia, the, the Asian docket, we are looking to Japan's preliminary market PMIs released overnight Sunday. Production remains subdued globally, however the tax hike may have encouraged some activity to have been brought forward. Bank of Japan Governor Kuroda speaks on Tuesday, and BOJ watchers will monitor for hints at future stimulus, given that the planned sales tax hike increases next month, and the fact that the yield on the 10-year government bond breached the lower bound of the central bank's target range. From a technical perspective, the dollar-yen has found resistance at the 108.50, now looking for any pullbacks to the 107 area to find support to set a base Given the prior range resistance at this area, we now anticipate that it will act as support, retesting the monthly pivot from above as well. So I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns to develop here, and then I'd be targeting a move up to 109.50. However, if we hold the lows put in last week, then there is a potential that we see an early test of that 109.50 area, where again, I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions to target a more meaningful correction back down to this 107 support area. Finally, in Australia, there's no tier one data of notes, but the focus will be on RBA Governor Lowe, who's speaking on Tuesday, providing an economic update. The Aussie will likely take its cue next week from risk sentiment regarding the US-Sino trade talks. From a technical perspective, the Australian dollar is testing a key support zone, and if we can't hold this 67.50, it's likely we retest the current lows back down at the 66.80 and probably breach those undercutting the year to date lows, testing the year yearly S1 pivot and also the monthly S1 down at 66.50, where I'd anticipate we see some profit taking. However, if we can hold Friday's lows at the 67.60 area, I see the potential to set a base here to target a test of the major trend line resistance coming in just below the 70 cent handle. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 23rd of September.